five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back, fellow night owls. This is Dr. Nighttime, and we're progressing through and finishing up on this last question from the written answer section of last fall's LTAM. Uh, this is the pension question. There's pretty consistently one pension question somewhere on there, and this is a relatively easy one. Uh, hence why it's only eight points. Uh, you act as the valuation actuary for the Acme Corporation, which sponsors a final average salary defined benefit pension plan for its employees. The age retirement benefit provision and valuation assumptions for Acme's plan are described below. The accrual rate is 2% per year of service. The final average salary is defined as the salary over the final year of employment. The normal form of pension is life annuity with no guarantee, paid monthly in advance. The normal retirement age is 65. Salaries increase each year on the 1st of January at a rate of 2.5% per year. Interest is 5%. Mortality of active members and retirees follows the standard ultimate life table. There are no exits prior to retirement at age 65 other than death. The two-term Woolhouse formula is used for annuities paid more frequently than annually, and the plan is funded using the traditional unit credit method. Yeah. And so, you're also given the following summary uh, membership data as of the valuation date on 1st of January 2020. Okay, fine. First thing asked is calculate the total actuarial liability for Acme's pension plan as of the valuation date. So you go through term by term. Uh, you have, so there are 20 employees, each of whom are currently age 35. So they'll only have to receive, you only have to pay out the pension uh, if they survive to age, 30, uh, age 65, 30 years later. Uh, there's 30 years of discount built in there, hence why I have this endowment figure in here. Times 2% per year, times eight years of service, times the 45,000 a year that they're currently earning. Note this is traditional unit credit, that's why you stick with the 45,000 per year, not the 45,000 times 1.025 to whatever power you need to, uh, to look in the future. That is projected unit credit. They only deal with projected unit credit way off at the end. And then times the monthly A double dot 65. So yeah, we have to use Woolhouse's formula again uh, for the third time on these six problems. Uh, it's, it's not typical for them to ask about Woolhouse's formula this many times on, uh, on the written answer section of one exam. Uh, to my mind, this kind of feels like that Sesame Street sketch from a while back where, uh, where, where everybody brought potato salad to the picnic. And, and generally, they want to actually test different concepts. So you, you wonder if there was some miscommunication between whoever was coming up with these six problems. Anyway. Uh, so fine. Then for the 60 year olds, right? Five of them, they have to survive five years, 2% per year times 25 years. They're earning 62,000. Again, monthly 65 year old annuity. And then there's one uh, person currently uh, receiving a pension, age 70. So that person's just going to receive those 32,000 per year, prorated per month, every month until that person dies. All right. Uh, you look up A double dot 65 and A double dot 70, you get 13.5498 and 12.0083 from the tables. And here and right there. Uh, you subtract off the 11 over 24 from Woolhouse's formula. Uh, I'll save you the trouble of needing to look at that graph diagram again. Uh, I will be uploading the video with the full explanation of that, but stay tuned for that one. All right. So you look up those numbers, uh, crunch everything in here. Algebra happens. Uh, oh, these endowment figures. Uh, obviously, you can't look up a 30 or 5 year endowment figure in the tables. What you would have to do is look at the survival probabilities and multiply by however many years of discount you need to. All right. So this is going to be L65 over L35 times 1.05 to the negative 30. This will be L65 over L60 times 1.05 to the negative 5. All right. Uh, 
crunch those numbers together, you get 2,340,099. Uh, what's important is that I keep these separated because we're actually going to be referring to these figures. Well, not this one, but these. We'll be referring to those uh, later on later parts of the problem. So that's just this one here. Calculate the normal cost for 2020 expressed as a percentage of the total payroll at the valuation date. And for the purpose of uh, calculating the normal cost, the pension in payment is what I would call self-financing. Note that we don't have to account for, or we don't have to add anything else into the account to pay this person's pension. Yes, if the person continues to survive, then there will be a survival benefit, essentially and the cost will, will increase because the person survives. Uh, if the person dies, then uh, the pension company kind of catches a break. Uh, but since we don't know which of those is going to happen, uh, it just averages out. So we can eliminate that completely from any sort of normal cost or normal contribution that the company needs to make. Uh, so value at, in 2020, if we ignore the irrelevant pension in payment. We just get the 414,381 plus the 1,556,119, we get 1,975,500. Uh, for 2021, uh, we make a few modifications to these lines. Uh, notice that we still keep the endowment of 35 for 30 years in advance and 60 for five years in advance. We do not advance those one year because we don't know whether those 30-year-olds, or sorry, whether 35-year-olds and the 60-year-olds, we don't know whether they survived one additional year. If we knew for a fact that they were going to, then uh, we'd have to adjust our endowment figures. Uh, we do multiply by an, an additional 1.05 for one more year of interest happening. Then the other changes that we make is the eight years and 25 years of service turn into nine years and 26 years of service. And the salaries multiply by 1.025 because they told us that was going to happen at the beginning of the problem. So for the 30 year old, sorry, the 35 year olds, this comes out to 501,725. For the 60 year olds, it comes out to uh, 1,741,764. Crunch those together, you get 2,243,489, and we just use a formula. Uh, I'm using policy value notation here, but it's uh, actuarial liability of the pension in 2020 plus normal cost times one year of interest uh, equals the actuarial liability a year later. Uh, algebra happens with these numbers, and you get that the normal cost is 166,156. You express it as a percentage of the total payroll at the valuation date. So that is in 2020, not in 2021. So you look at 45,062,000 rather than multiplying by 1.025, 20 for the 45,000, 5 for the 62,000. Notice that the pension itself does not constitute payroll. Right? Uh, you're talking about setting aside however much of the salaries you're paying anyway. Right? You don't have to double count in that you're paying these salaries, setting some aside of that for the pension. And the pension that is already in payment, that is already accounted for. Uh, so you divide those numbers, you get 13.73%. All right. The rest of the problem is easier. Uh, so ACME uh, terminated the employments of all the 35-year-old members on the valuation date. Sorry, folks. And calculate the revised normal contribution expresses a percentage of total payroll of the remaining uh, plan members. And so what you find is that you now no longer need to worry about the 35 year olds, right? Because you don't need to continue to contribute more uh, when those pensions have already been kind of sealed because they're no longer employed. You do not need to continue to contribute towards a pension for somebody who doesn't work for you anymore. Obviously, whatever you've already contributed, that should maintain, uh, that should still be valid, but you don't have to main, uh, contribute anymore. Uh, and as mentioned, the pension and payment is self-financing, so you only need to worry about that one line of the 60-year-olds. Uh, as 
as we already calculated, for that group, it was 1,556,119 1, in 2020. It's 1,741,764 in 2021. Same old formula. Uh, old value plus normal cost times one year of interest equals new value. Uh, you get that the cost is 102,703. Divide that by the 5 times 62,000. And that gets you uh, 0.3313. One, three. So a much higher, 33% rather than about 14%. Uh, so it went up a whole lot. And finally, part D, uh, without further calculation, state whether the change in normal contributions would be greater or smaller under projected unit credit funding. Justify your answer. So what you have to remember is the difference between projected unit credit funding and traditional unit credit funding uh, is that you contribute uh, under projected unit credit funding, you pr uh, contribute more for older workers and less than you otherwise would. Sorry, uh, for, for traditional unit credit, that is. Uh, yeah, traditional unit credit, you, yeah, yeah, you contribute more for older and less for youngers. Uh, as an example of that, suppose if you have trouble remembering which way it goes, it, as you might have told that I kind of got a little confused there earlier, but here's how I like to just do a quick calculation to figure out which way it goes. Suppose we have just a two-year employment plan. Right? So somebody is 63 years old and is going to be working for two years. Uh, earns 100000 in the first year and is going to earn 110000 in the second year. Because right? if there is no salary change, then there's no difference between projected unit credit where you look at final salary and traditional unit credit where you look at current salary. Uh, assume that this person is known not to die in these two years, just for simplicity. Uh, assume alpha is 0.02 and assume a double dot 65 for this person is 10, just to make it a nice round number. We're keeping this as simple as we can. Uh, obviously, before the person started working, right, the V63, value is going to be zero. And by hook or by crook, right, somehow this person is earning 4% total, right, 2% over two years of a $110,000 ending salary, uh, an average of 10 payments, if you will, for a double dot 65. Well, let's keep it annual and fully discrete just to keep it as simple as we can. Uh, but in this setup, just to figure out the difference between, uh, the qualitative difference between traditional and projected unit credit, you set this up. You get that by the end of it, you ultimately need a value of 44,000. So you have to go from zero to 44,000 over the course of two years. Using traditional unit credit, when you crunch the numbers in, uh, you get 19,048, just the 2% uh, the of 100,000 one year in advance. So you discount by one year of discount. Uh, with projected, that's with a P here, 64P. In red, uh, there you're looking at the 110,000. So that means uh, you end up with 20,952. Notice that under this, uh, under these conditions, uh, in the first year you're paying less with traditional than projected, which means in the second year you have to pay more with traditional than projected. What that means, if you were to switch to projected unit credit, uh, the uh, cost that you would have for the normal cost for the younger workers would be higher than they otherwise would. And the normal costs for the older workers would be lower than they otherwise would. What that means is that when you're terminating all of your younger employees and keeping the older employees, you have less of a difference between how much of a percent uh, your, uh, how much of a percent you have to set aside of total payroll. Uh, okay, so that's why under projected unit credit you would have less of a difference. All right, so that's it for the written answer questions of the 2020 fall LTAM. And as always, if you like the way I explain things, click the link in the description. Uh, if you wanted to set up private lessons, click the link in the description. And until next time, this is Dr. Nighttime wishing you a good night.